I think statins are the drug of choice for high-risk primary prevention patients and secondary prevention patients. They are the class of medication for which we have an evidence base to substantiate their effectiveness to reduce death and atherosclerotic cardiovascular events. I think the dose chosen is really that recommended by the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology and it's targeted to risk. And there are tables available that help all of us uh, try to correlate the dose of a medication with respect to the intensity of therapy that we have been recommended to provide. Nowadays we tend to use statins at relatively high intensity. So certainly patients with existing cardiovascular disease, we start statins at sort of the, the higher range doses, um, atorvastatin at 40 or 80 milligrams, for example. Uh, in, in patients who are not as high risk, who are younger, we might start a little bit lower, see how they do, titrate up over time. But in general, the trend has been to using higher dose statin therapy because that's where the data suggest we get most reductions, not only in terms of LDL, but in terms of cardiovascular risk. Liver enzymes, frankly, are just not a big deal. Um, I think we're going to get to the point where we probably don't even measure liver enzymes much anymore. In fact, in my own practice, I do it. I do it uh, at least once uh, after I've started a statin, and I pretty much don't pay too much attention after that because it's not, not a problem. I think from the IMPROVE it trial, we compared two groups, statin only versus statin uh, combination therapy, and compared 70 to about 55. The median was actually 50. So I've taken that to say that for my post-MI patients that I'm really aiming to get into the 50s uh, for their LDL. Everyone in the whole world uses targets, including the authors of the guideline who say they d that one shouldn't. And to their defense of that, they've been too defensive, but um, they didn't have evidence, they thought, of uh, adopting other therapies. And so that was, again, two plus years ago, so things have changed, thankfully. And uh, now we can focus on the important task of getting cholesterol really low. And we have evidence to say into the 50s is better than 70, which is better than 100. So you know, getting cholesterol levels, L LDL, down quite low is uh, good practice and, and evidence-based. Since the publication of the Improve It trial, azetamibe seems to have made a comeback. And in that particular trial, as you know, the addition of azetamibe to simvastatin lowered events after a long-term follow-up in a lot of patients. And in years past, many of us took our patients off azetamibe because we didn't really have the information to substantiate that they were clinically effective. But for many patients who are not able to tolerate high-intensity statin therapy, azetamibe added to a statin can oftentimes provide better reduction. Well, it's an exciting time in treating cholesterol in that we traditionally have had just statins and pushing to high-dose statins. There's resistance for fear of side effects, but we now have data with zetamibe that it too can reduce cardiovascular events, and so that adds a second proven um, option in, in terms of lowering LDL. And then, of course, PCSK9 inhibitors dramatically lower LDL as, a, as another option for us. So what this provides us is more evidence. So 2013 was 2013. It's now 2015, almost 16. And we have more evidence, more options. And so it can bring back the notion of trying to get the cholesterol down as, as low as possible.